Aleim. In three situations, Hashem cries on behalf of these people. B'chol Yom, every day he cries. Al Mishev Shel Lasuk B'Torah Ve'in Eroseik. A person who is able to engage in Torah study and does not, is what to cry about. Hashem cries. Al Mishev Shel Lasuk B'Torah Ve'Oseik. A person who is not able to study and despite his limitation, nevertheless he applies himself. So we yesterday we pointed out, it seems it's a different type of crying. Right? This is similar to Gmar says in Sukkah, that it's at the end of time that the Rishom are going to cry and the Tzaddikim are going to cry. Even though it's a different type of crying. So the Masha over there says, no, it's the same crying. Right? They'll see the, um, the Rishom will see the Yitzhar as, as no bigger than a hairbreadth. And they said, how could this, something which is Chuta Sairo, how could we, how could that control our lives? And the Tzaddikim, they're going to see the Yitzhar like a mountain and says, how were we able to conquer it? So you'd say, there you'd say it's tears of joy, even though it's both tears. But over there, Marashah says, no. The crying, they cry over there. There it's very good. The Marashah says, in Sukkah, what's the crying? The Tzaddik, when he's confronted with the test, he believes he has the ability to overcome it. Why? Because it's a contendable uh, opponent. But at the end of time, when they can see what the Yetzirah was, that it was like a mountain, so why were we able to confront the Yetzirah? It was only because Siat the Bishmaya. So they're going to cry because they're going to realize it was arrogance that they believed it was them was not Kodesh Baruch Hu. They, they believed they had something to do with it. But when they see how enormous it's like a mountain, you can't, you can't overcome a mountain. So that, that's why they cry because they realize how off base they were in retrospect. But over here, Kodesh Baruch Hu cries, Mishayev Shalasuk Betov a person who didn't have the ability to study, and he studies. I mean, you cry over that person. It's unbelievable. You know, this, this, is, this is the ultimate nachas. It's show, showing dedication. You know, the Gemara tells us in, uh, in Sanhedrin, in Zorah, it says that there were times that it says, Rebbe Bocha. Rebbe cried. Rebbe Danosi cried. It tells a story that, you know, that a uh, person, he, did, he was a Russia all his life, the Chuba. Basko comes out and says, This one, So it says, he cried. He, in one moment, the person has no connection to Olam Abba. In one moment, you're able to acquire Olam Abba. Mm -hmm. But it says, Bocha Rebbe. It shouldn't be Bocha. Rebbe should rejoice us. What's Bocha Rebbe? So the Marsha explains. If a person is able to acquire Olam Abba in one split moment, so if a person invests his whole life in Torah, in, in, in mitzvahs, how much more so? Right? So how much are we wasting? How much are we passing on opportunity? That's, uh, that's the Bocha Rebbe. That's what he cried. Yeah. Al-Panish HaMizgual HaTzibor Bechinom Adkan. The administrator of a community where he ingratiates himself with what the, his platform for his own in, to inflate himself is the tzibur. He cries. He's pain. That, so that's pain. Use my tzibur to what to and to inflate yourself to stroke your ego. So Hakadosh Baruch was bocha. Hashem cries for that. A person wants a position of power because he he uses the people to feel empowered. Self-serving, yeah. So Hashem cries. He says he's not going to discuss it now. What's possible to talk about? He says, but in terms of the dimension of the sin, a parnas who uses the tzibur as his platform for self-advancement and gratiation, self-serving he says especially in our generation this should be discussed and repeated a thousand times that's how prevalent it is you know the um, Mark tells in Sanhedrin that a Dayan who's not called to be a Dayan it's considered 
gods of silver and gold. Why? Because they pay them off. People, they pay for positions to be a dayan, to be a to be in a position to give rulings. But they're not qualified. Like a person that pays for a position to be a judge. It's not qualified to be a judge. So therefore, the Gemara says it's considered Avodah Zor. It's like, because it says, Elohei Kesev Elohei Zor. Gods of, go, of silver and gold. So over there, the Marshal writes, on that Gemara, it's time for the Gemara Davot in Sanhedrin. In his time, there's the Marshal writing, same time as the Maral. They lived at the same time. How prevalent it was that people were not qualified to be Dayonim. And because they came from wealthy families, the families would pay for the position. And their rulings were totally corrupt. They were corrupted mm -hmm. rulings. They weren't qualified. Mm -hmm. they, they would bribe them. They were this, you know, they were in positions of power. And they, were, they, were, they sat on the bezin. And they passed judgment to everybody. He says, that's, that's what we call it. Like what we're experiencing today. There's the marshal. That's Elohei Chesav Elohei Zov. It's the marshal. So here the Maral's writing. He says, this, this, this issue, this problem, Parnas Mizugal He says, it pays to repeat this even a thousand times. Because it's so prevalent in our generation. This is the Marshall. He didn't explain that. Hashem cries. Yeah, you have to. It has to be explained. I mean, it's, it's not the same type of crying as the other two. The other are definitely a tears which represent pain. It's pain. The only thing I could think about, had him explain that, the Gemara says in Tainus, I forgot who it was, it was one of the Amoroim, that he was born poor. Very poor. His lot was poverty, not to be understood. And it said he was so poor that all he had to eat was a head of garlic. And when he bit it to the garlic, because he was like passing out, he just pa he fainted. He passed out from hunger. So it says when he passed out, all of a sudden, it was like, like a spark came off his forehead. And our Kurdish broke him. So they asked him, when he came to, he regained his consciousness. So they asked him, what did, what did you say? He says, our Kurdish broke came to him and said to him, he, had a very, he was a very special dude, this Amora. And it's like, you know, when you, when, when you, you like somebody very much and you, like, even, you tap him on the head, it's, that's what the spark represents. But what he said was, he asked him, he says, you know, the, the poverty is beyond. I can't deal with it. Hashem says, you know, to, to give you another predicament, not to be in such an impoverished state, I'd have to recreate the world. I'd have to recreate existence. And even if I re recreate existence because of who you are, it won't necessarily come out that you're going to have wealth. You may have to be destitute again. Because that is your place. That's your purpose in existence. I mean, all existence that's to be recreated, maybe your situation will be different. Because then, in, in a different creation, you'd have a different purpose. But factually, it may come out, it may not be different. So therefore, it really doesn't make a difference. So he says to him, so he asked him, he says, how much of my life have I lived? He asked Hashem, he says, that I lived the majority of my life? He says, yeah. yes, you lived it. He says, if that's the case, I'll stick it out till the end. That's what the Amorah says to Hashem. Meaning, you suffered so long, there's not much more to go, I'll take it all the way to the end to suffer. No, but what, what I was saying here, he have a person that doesn't have the capability to learn, and he applies himself. So the question is, so why did Hashem give him the ability? Hashem should have given him the ability. The answer is, because his situation is, he has to be in a position not to have the ability. But you can imagine if he would have the ability, and he applies himself to what degree, how much he would advance himself. So that's the pain. The pain is that Hashem had to put him in a position that he should not have the ability to accomplish what he has to accomplish. But, but if he would have... It's not hopeless. What is hopeless? When it comes to the Torah, the A is for the effort. Effort is the A. It's, 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 it's the application. It's the way you apply yourself. The dedication. The way you do, to the degree you su succeed, that's up to Hashem to degree you succeed. But here, but still, you, need, you, have, you have to be encouraged. This man has no encouragement. Despite that, he just keeps going at it. So Hashem is paying for this person. So you can imagine if you would have given him the capability, how far, how much further he would have gone to be continued. No, 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 no,
I don't think no. It wasn't that okay. No one said Well, because they said shiva. But a little different. A little different. I'm not saying it's not a, it, it doesn't have special value, but it's different. 